when we discuss solutions, we use three terms over and over and over again, and those are volume, amount, and concentration. When we discuss such quantities, we have to have units in order to, for comparison. Uh, and those units uh, define what we mean by volume, by amount, by concentration. Two of something means nothing. Two liters of something does mean something. Uh, we don't want to use funny units, two cups or three furlongs, in order to describe a, a unit of uh, volume or a unit of length. Uh, people overseas, our international colleagues, even some of our colleagues next door might not understand what we're talking about. Uh, science has adopted a system of units called the Systeme International. My French isn't that good, I'm, I'm trying. Uh, the abbreviation is SI. Uh, uh, the International System of Units was adopted uh, a number of years ago, and it includes seven base units that are based upon natural laws uh, or uh, standards that are maintained under very careful conditions. There are also SI-derived units, and those are units of measure that are developed by manipulating the base units themselves to create new expressions. Volume is an SI-derived unit, for example, where mass, on the other hand, uh, is a, uh, an SI base unit. The uh, unit of volume that we use in the laboratory is the liter. It's a volume that is uh, produced by, uh, or the volume that is contained in an enclosure of 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters, a cube. Uh, it's also the volume taken up by one kilogram of water, pure water, that is. Uh, for amounts, the SI unit for an amount is actually the mole, and I'm going to talk about the mole in a little bit. Uh, but uh, we talk about amounts in the biological laboratory in terms of mass very frequently. Uh, and the unit of mass is the kilogram. We most often work with grams rather than kilograms. We very often work with milliliters, which are a thousandth of a liter, rather than whole liters. Uh, in terms of concentration, a concentration can be defined as an amount of substance in a given volume. Uh, and it's, it's a, a ratio, a proportion. And we have to be very careful not to mix up amounts, volumes, and concentrations. If we get the units straightened out, uh, we're fine. When we define a solution, that is, we describe a very specific solution, we define it in terms of what type of solvent. The solvent is assumed to be water in biology, unless we state otherwise. The type of solute, or types of solutes, if more than one is, is uh, there. Uh, we throw in the pH. And we usually describe, we have to describe the concentration. There's a number of ways of describing the concentrations of a solution. Uh, we use various prefixes in order to describe the volumes uh, and the concentrations. For example, um, a um, solution of one hundredth of a kilogram per liter might be best uh, described as uh, 10 grams per liter. Uh, and likewise, we can talk about milligrams, micrograms. We can talk about milliliters, microliters, nanoliters. Uh, it, it's a good idea to become familiar with the system of prefixes. They are all multipliers uh, in three orders of magnitude each. Suppose someone has worked out all the details. You have a procedure all written out, and it defines what kind of solutions you're going to need for it. There are a number of ways of describing a solution. Uh, the most common ways are called weight in weight, weight in volume, volume in volume, and molarity. And you'll probably encounter all those kinds of expressions when you do biological work. Uh, a couple of less common um, expressions are normality that are commonly used and molality. Molality is probably the least frequently encountered in biology. When you make up solutions using these various kinds of formulas, you'll almost always prepare them volumetrically. As I described when I was discussing glassware, that means you go ahead and take a volume of solvent, you mix up your solute, you get it thoroughly mixed, pour it into a graduated cylinder, and then top off the volume to some predetermined final volume so that your solution is the, of the exact concentration you intended and the um, the volume is just right. If you measure, let's suppose you need 250 milliliters of 0.9% sodium chloride. 
and you go ahead and take 250 milliliters of water, you throw in sodium chloride, you mix it up, your volume is now greater than 250 milliliters because of the addition of the sodium chloride. By mixing this stuff volumetrically, you mix your sodium chloride into a smaller initial volume of solvent, mix it up thoroughly, and then you bring your volume to a final volume of 250 milliliters. Now you have the exact desired concentration, you have the exact desired volume. You don't always prepare solutions volumetrically. Sometimes uh, accuracy is not that critical. A uh, very common exception is with microbiological media, such as broths or augers. In that case, the directions right on the package usually say take a liter of this and mix in so many grams of medium, mix them together and sterilize them and you're all set. In that case, we don't worry about the additional volume that's contributed by the media. It isn't that important. But with physiological buffers, where osmolarity is important, where pH is important, where concentration makes a difference, where the concentration of reaction, reactants has to be carefully controlled, we do want to prepare our solutions volumetrically. The uh, unit known as the mole is uh, a number, actually, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. We, we know it to greater accuracy than that now, but that's good enough for me. It's known as Avogadro's number uh, after Amadeo Avogadro, uh, who lived uh, uh, in the 19th century, as a matter of fact. Avogadro, if he came back today, uh, would have no idea what you were talking about if you uttered the number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. He never calculated the number that was named after him. Avogadro established a couple of important principles in atomic theory and, and uh, chemistry that led to the development of Avogadro's number and the unit that we now call the mole. Uh, in the early 19th century, John Dalton was working with gases along with a number of other chemists um, and uh, made the observation that um, different gases, when mixed, required different volumes. And the proportions of gases that were required to make, say, water from hydrogen and oxygen, oxygen gas, or other, other kinds of, of chemical reactions involving gases, usually involved integer ratios in the volumes of the two uh, gaseous reactants. According to Dalton's position at the time, substances were made up of atoms, and single atoms came together to make new substances. Uh, if uh, single atoms came together to make new substances, why then did you need, for example, two volumes of hydrogen gas and one volume of oxygen to make water? It was a problem uh, that uh, needed to be worked out, and there was a great deal of controversy over explanations of the problem at the time. Avogadro's big contribution that led toward the discovery of the mole first of all was his observation, and it was strictly observation that he could not prove at the time, that molecules and atoms are different. He proposed, in fact, that molecules are composed of atoms, uh, and therefore uh, it might be a molecule that mixes with an atom. You might need two of this and one of that, for example. Uh, it kind of resolved the problem. Uh, another contribution that Avogadro made in terms of gases was Avogadro's principle. Uh, that um, the number of molecules in a given volume is the same for any gas as long as the conditions of temperature and pressure maintain constant. And so together with Avogadro's principle and his observation, which again was not proven experimentally at the time, of uh, the relationship between atoms and molecules, those principles led to the development of the theory behind the mole and the development of Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number now, which again is 6.02 times 20 the, 10 to the 23rd, is defined as the number of molecules in 12 grams of pure carbon, carbon being elemental. Carbon has an atomic number of 12, hence the 12 grams. And thus we have Avogadro's number. Uh, the mole is very valuable in calculating solutions, in defining solutions, because the mole represents the number of molecules uh, in a substance. It is, in fact, the SI unit for amount of substance. If we describe a solution in terms of moles per unit volume, we are telling someone exactly how many molecules there are of a reactant per unit volume. And when we mix reactants, the mole 
relationships are much more important than the actual masses of the uh, of the reactants because masses vary depending on the size of, of the molecules. So this development is quite important to solution chemistry. We'll talk about the mole, molar quantities, molar solutions. We'll talk about uh, solutions that are made by using simpler formulas in part.